The pressure the federal government to uh, the to pressure the federal government to act, the Poor People's Campaign is holding a four-day march. I am tired, but I am not nearly as tired as the people that are having to fight for their rights over and over and over again. So I, I used to watch all of the '60s documentaries and say, if I was if I was alive and of age, I would be there. And, and now this is my chance, unfortunately, to have to be here. If they asked me to run a marathon, I, I would say no. But I can put one foot in front of the other and walk. And, and the energy here is 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 is, is, is very empowering. It truly is. The group started yesterday in Georgetown, Texas, and will end on Saturday at the state capitol in Austin. The march is in the spirit of the famed Selma to Montgomery March of 1965, which pressured Congress to pass the Voting Rights Act of that same year, one of the single greatest pieces of voting rights legislation in American history. And as that march proceeded in Texas, the Reverend Al Sharpton and Martin Luther King III linked arms yesterday with Democratic Texas legislators at the MLK Memorial in Washington, D.C. Those lawmakers left their home state in an effort to block consideration of voting legislation that they oppose. And joining us now is former Congressman Beto O'Rourke. He's been a leading vo voice for voting rights in the state and nationwide and is about to head back out on the march. It's great to have you back on the show. Uh, tell us what you think is possible when it comes to voting rights legislation. I think the Senate can pass the For the People Act or some version of the For the People Act, as, as Joe just suggested. But Failure is not an option. And, you know, none other than Senator Joe Manchin said something to that effect. I know that he believes in the right to vote for every eligible American. I know that he wants to help see this through. And most importantly, I know the president feels that way. He gave a blistering speech on voting rights in Philadelphia a couple of weeks back. And he called this the single greatest attack on our democracy since the Civil War. And so we must act. We must move forward. But as you just suggested by showing that clip of the uh, civil rights and voting rights advocates in the 1960s, this kind of thing doesn't happen without a push from the public. And so we're marching this week to help push the president and Senate Democrats, and we will rally in Austin this Saturday at 10 a.m. in front of the state capitol to make sure they hear us loud and clear from Texas. Uh, Eugene Scott's with us from The Washington Post. Uh, Beto, and has a question for you. Eugene. Congressman, uh, we know that voting rights is one of the most important issues to black voters. It's something that black voters speak about almost every time there's an election. But as you know, this is not something that's just concerning black voters. Uh, Americans in rural America are th having their voting rights threatened. Maybe even some conservatives and Latino Americans, all of these demographics that are well represented in your state. How do you get people who have made up in their minds that this is an issue that doesn't really uh, concern them and somehow could even hurt them if uh, the voting rights of certain demographics are expanded to realize that this is something that is in their best interest and that affects their idea of what America can be and should be as well. You're right. These voter suppression bills are so often targeted at specific populations, historically black and brown voters. In the new Texas bills, it's voters with disabilities. It's the very young, it's the very old. And it's voters not just in urban counties, but sometimes in rural communities who are going to have a harder time getting to the polls or voting early or voting by mail. I think the important thing to do, and, and Bishop Barber has done an excellent job of this, is to connect voting to everything else that we want to change and improve in our lives. Texas has a minimum wage of $7.25 an hour. It's not going to be raised unless more people vote. We are the least insured state in the country where people still die of diabetes and the flu and curable cancers because they literally cannot see a doctor. We're not going to expand Medicaid in this state unless people can vote. Last year, 7 million eligible Texans didn't participate. And that was not for lack of love of our democracy. It's because this state makes it harder than any other to be able to cast that ballot. So if we want to change this state, this country for the better, we've got to vote. And if we're going to be able to vote, we need new voting rights legislation like the For the People Act. So very important that we keep the pressure up on the Senate and on the president to get that done. 
Hey, Congressman John Lemire, you just took me to where I wanted to go to you with this next question. You know, as you know, state legislatures in your home state, Texas, fled uh, and they're in Washington, D.C. to avoid uh, having the voting rights legislation passed there. But there's only so long they can stay uh, away. And they and others, including civil rights activists, say the only solution is federal legislation. They also say the only solution, the only way that gets done is if the filibuster changes. So how much of a part of your mission is the filibuster? And in particular, shouldn't the people you'd be lobbying be those moderate senators, Democrats, Manchin, Cinema, a handful of others who were so reluctant to change it? Aren't they the obstacles right now to getting something done in the Senate? I think you're absolutely right that the filibuster is going to have to change. And as Joe alluded to in, in his tweet, you've, you've changed it to approve fast-track trade deals on a simple majority, Supreme Court justices, federal judges, budget deals. Make a fifth exception for voting rights legislation. And it's going to require all 50 Democrats in the Senate, including the two senators you, you just mentioned, to do that. But I think there's one more player that, that we need to engage in this more fully, and that's the president. I think his extraordinary power can help compel those and other senators to vote for that voting rights exception. And he can also make that case to the country uniquely, uh, hopefully bring in not just Democrats to the table, but Democrats and Republicans to the table. That's really what it took to get the Voting Rights Act of 65 passed. You need the full engagement of LBJ calling that joint session of Congress on the 15th of March, 1965, and then using every political muscle in his body to push that through. That, that's what we need at this point. But, but you're right in terms of the specific path this has to take. It's not going to happen without a change to the filibuster. But thankfully, the Senate is well practiced in changing the rules of the filibuster. Let's, let's make this fifth exception for voting rights. Beto O'Rourke, thank you very much for coming on the show this morning. Good luck.